Adjuster TV is sponsored by Crawford and Company. Register now for their annual CatCon conference, February 19th through the 23rd in Allen, Texas, at crawco.com slash cat. A couple of things. <laughs> And I tell this to anybody, so to adjusters, insurance agents, you name it, they got, please get sewer and drain back up on your policies, okay? Do not, right. trust no. me, I've been in houses with sewer and drain backup coverage and houses that didn't. I can tell you which ones went well and which ones didn't. And, and really the only other thing, how everybody can work together, speed is the key. You know, one of the things we run into is the homeowner being nervous to have us start the service because they haven't talked with their insurance company or they haven't talked with an adjuster. So as soon as we get the green light to do emergency services, I'm not talking about full out demo and stuff like that, but just the emergency services where we can stabilize a home and, and get the drying equipment in there to start the process is huge. In this video, I chat with Rod and Lindsay from a Northeast Ohio-based ServPro. We talk about, among other things, the basics of water mitigation and classes and categories of water and how those relate to whether or not something is dried out or it's ripped out and replaced. Starting now. You're watching Adjuster TV, adjusters first. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV and by Adjuster TV Plus. Get unlimited access to a growing library of the best adjuster training videos created by the most trusted name in claims, Adjuster TV at adjustertvplus.com. Hey, Matt here, and welcome to Adjuster TV, where I share my more than 20 years of experience as a cat property IA to help you build a rewarding career as an independent insurance adjuster so that you can help people during natural disasters and earn a great living doing it. Get instant access to advanced property claims training videos with your free seven day trial of Adjuster TV Plus at adjustertvplus.com. Includes beginner and advanced Xactimates, ability scoping, and policy trainings. Adjuster TV Plus. Com. Okay, before we jump into my interview with Rod and Lindsay, here's a little sneak peek of the 2023 NACA convention special feature that's coming soon. Is this your uh, first time to come to NACA? Yes, it is. And uh, how's your experience been so far? Invaluable. Um, I got my first deployment. <laughs> Tonight we are running on the right track. Become a member of this incredible organization at nacatadj.org. All right, here's my conversation with SurfPro. But when it comes to to water and, and water mitigation, um, the most important thing is is actually there's two things. Uh, the first thing is what is the category of water, and what is the class of water. That that's the most important thing because the category and class is going to tell us how we are going to mitigate that situation. So sure. um, to, so an example, when we go into a home uh, and we speak to, uh, we're gonna, we wanna know what the source is. Where did it come from? Did it come from a sanitary line, such like a, um, a water line that goes into a refrigerator? Um, or did it come from the sewer and drain? Uh, and what came out of that sewer and drain? Category two water, or is it full sewage, which would be a category three? Um, sure. If it's a category one water loss, uh, really all we're going to come in there is kind of extract the water, clean it, and dry it. That's that's really it. If it's a category two, uh, there may be some demo that's involved. Um, so there'll be some extraction, some cleaning, maybe some small amount of demo. And then, of course, we're going to dry it. Now, if it's category three water, we're going to come in there and we're going to be demoing a lot because anything that's been affected by a category three water loss is coming out. There's no way that we could say that we could clean it and it's going to be OK. So we would come in there and we would we would demo. Now, that's the category. 
but then you got to know well what class is it class is basically if it's like five percent or less of the like bedroom or kitchen or whatever room you may be in you're not calling us for a class one water loss you're going to do it yourself you're not going to call a restoration sure. company to come in they're not even going to call you guys so we're not getting any phone calls if we are if we are um you know that person probably needs a little bit more help than restoration help but um uh but a category now a, a class two water is anywhere from 40 percent or less um of the of the area so if we're talking about a 600 square foot it would be 40 percent of that 600 square foot spot now anything over that 40 percent that is a that's a class three they're definitely calling us in we're coming in and we're going to hit it and then if it's a class four, because some people might say, well, if class one is under 5%, class four is under 40%, class three is over 40%, what's class four? Well, class four is like deep held and deep bound water. So it could be like a concrete floor. Also, it could be like a, a gymnasium floor or something that holds the water a lot that's probably going to need some specialty drying. Gotcha. Okay, so so in other words, the category is the type of water, right? So category yes. one being basically like tap water, yes, on up to the dirtiest thing you could think of, which, which is category if it touches, three, which would be like sewage. Yes, right. So whatever that touches, you got to throw it away. You can't. There's no salvaging that. No, no drying exactly. it out and trying to clean it or save it. Right. Um, and exactly. then so then the class is is really the kind of the level of severity, um, based on you know the percentage of the area and then i guess you know the class four is is the the percentage of the area plus like the potential for that whatever the materials are to really hold on to exactly moisture, that, right? that would just it takes longer to dry it holds water so you get into that with a lot of hardwood floors uh we i say gymnasium floors because we do a lot of gymnasium floors we do a lot of commercial restoration so we get those type of uh issues that come in um with sure. that Talk to us a little, a little bit about um, sort of the process when you guys get activated. Like if you if and an insurance company is involved, like who's calling you first? Is it typically the insurance company or is it the homeowner? And then what happens like okay. hours, days, weeks right. after that? So we get the calls in, in numerous ways. Um, uh, we get calls direct from insurance agents, insurance agents that we've built relationship and trust with. They will call us directly they'll either call the office or they'll call me directly um we get calls from uh, the internet like google and different things like that somebody will have a water and drain back up and they'll google water and drain back up we pop up they call us we also have corporate relationships so surpro corp will call us directly too and say we have we have this and so business relationships and stuff like that. but our three major referral sources um would be corporate google and um, insurance agents and adjusters that call us directly. Uh, once we receive the phone call uh, for a sewer and drain backup or any type of loss, uh, that goes to our priority responder that's in that area. Since we have 15 franchises, we have it, uh, you know, we have each franchise has their own priority responder. So the, rep the priority responder takes that phone call, sets up the appointment with the homeowner or the business owner. That priority responder then goes out there and talks with the customer, explains the process, explains what is about to happen depending on the category and class of loss. So he'll go there and he'll say, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, you have a category two loss. Um, that's a class of three, which basically means your whole basement is flooded. You're gonna need mitigation work. He'll explain that whole process to them if they're comfortable with us and then they want us to do the job, he will have them sign the authorization. You know, we have to get an authorization signed before we do before we do anything. When he's done with that, then he'll go through, he'll finish the scope and the sketch. Now we use Xactimate to figure out what the price is going to be. Um, but he'll do the scope and sketch. As soon as we get that authorization for services, he then calls the company, uh, our company, to, so that we can dispatch our crew chiefs and technicians to the job. And a lot of times what happens is as he's scoping and sketching, we have guys that are en route to come do the emergency. This is just emergency services. They're coming to do the emergency services. And many times what happens when the priority responder is done with his scope and his sketch, 
our technicians are arriving to the house. So then our uh, priority responder can then say, Mr. and Mrs. Homeowner, here is your crew chief and here's your technician that will be performing the services tonight. Um, we found out it works a lot better when we send a priority responder out there first instead of two guys in a truck that are just ready to go down there, demo the basement, suck up water, and just go to town. Right. This way, um, we find out that uh, um, it just works out better because they're a little bit more professional, a little bit more empathetic, and can walk them through the process. When our technicians come in, they're great at what they do. They come in, they're sucking up, you know, water and they're pulling, you know, padding and stuff like they just want to get to work. And so it's worked out really, really well where the comfortable just loves the communication, which is key to anything of what's going on and what the process is. So and so you guys have, like you said, you had mentioned that you have some corporate relationships like um, with major carriers. I'm guessing that if, you know, Liberty Mutual, if you have a relationship with those guys or whoever, um, mm -hmm. that you have, um, I, th I think some adjusters kind of maybe don't fully understand how those relationships work. And, you know, if you're, if that changes what you do, or if it's just a matter of what you agree to with the, with the carrier, yeah. does that make sense? So depending on the carrier that we have a corporate relationship with, um, when we go out to a job, we, um, everything's done technology now. It's all done on the iPad. We very rarely have any paper. So when we go out to a job and um, he, he gets all the customer info, he finds out what the insurance carrier is that they have. As soon as he punches in that, car uh, that carrier on his iPad, all the paperwork that we need to sign for that carrier comes up. So if there are special instructions uh, for us to, to tell them, then, then it's listed there. Like a lot of times they may have an emergency limit that's 5,000. Like you can't go past right. 5,000 you know, or 2,500 or something like that. Or it may say, before you do any demo, you have to talk to an adjuster or show pictures or something like that. So, but every carrier that we have is in our database for, on our iPad. So it'll come up. So our priority responders and our crew chiefs know what is demanded of them by that particular carrier. Maybe talk a little bit about like how an adjuster can you know, get their brain wrapped around why that decision was made versus just mm -hmm. drawing it out. Yeah. So we're going to, we're number one, we're going to look at the source, you know, if it's category, again, if it's category one, we're not, we're not doing anything. Category two, um, possibly we're, we're seeing, uh, why is it category two? Is it category two because it started with a sanitary source and then maybe it's gone through some building materials and stuff like that. So that's why it's a category two. Has it gotten behind the walls in a way where it's affecting um, insulation? Because if it's on a wall that has insulation, well, you can't dry the insulation because once the insulation gets wet, it's ruined. It's, it's done. It's right. not going to do what it's what what it's supposed to do insulating so we may block. say hey because of insulation we're going to have to cut this so then we can put insulation back in uh before we read drywall that, that that's a big thing because you want to make sure that that the customer is is taking is taken care of so if it's an outside wall and if it has insulation then we're going to say do this um we know if there's any type of you know which would be a category three any type of fecal matter or anything like that it's not a question. It's it's getting cut um, and right. things like that. And the only other time we would do, there may be, we, we would have to check with a with a carrier, say, hey, listen, uh, this is the loss. This is what's going on. And a lot of times we have to leave it. Up, we have to leave it up to the insurance company and not us. We'll say it's recommended and we do everything by, you know, um, the IICRC. So that's that's what we go by. Um, and, uh, but we will not do anything, um, until we get approvals to do so. We will give recommendations, um, but we will not do anything until we get the okay from an adjuster, whomever it may be. What can adjusters do to kind of help with the process and maybe, you know, stay out of the way or, you know, not hinder the process, we should say. Well, the, the biggest thing that they can do is get us approvals as quick as possible and <clears throat> hopefully not hold up emergency services. Um, we know that we may go into a property and, and, and we may not be able to demo, but the one thing we want to do is we need to make sure, you know, carpet can get extracted, 
padding can be removed, uh, antimicrobial can be sprayed, and drying equipment can be set up because, you know, speed is the key. And you want to minimize the damage as much. You, you don't want to leave it and then get into secondary damage and different things like that. So I tell them even when I, when I teach CE classes, speed is the key. The faster we get there, the less damage. That means the less the claim is going to be. Um, and the sooner that homeowner is going to get back to, um, you know, uh, nor normalcy. Talk to us a little bit about um, SurfPro sort of as an organization and, you know, maybe why you chose um, to build your business around their particular brand. SurfPro is the number one um, brand when it comes to restoration. There, there's, there's, there's no one close. Um, uh, I've dealt with independents. I've dealt with other, you know, other franchise. Um, when it comes to Surpro, number one, when it comes to help from the home office, um, it, it, they're a phone call away. Um, again, uh, there's 2,000 independently owned and operated Surpros. That means um, minus our 15, so that's 1,900 and you know 85 franchises. If we run into a snag or we run into a problem, that's how many franchises we can call. We can call home office. We can call another franchise owner. Uh, give you an example. Uh, we're from Ohio. Uh, we had uh, a decent storm uh, in North Canton. Okay. Uh, the North Canton franchise called us to see if we could come help them because they got too many phone calls. So you have that kind of brotherhood of being able to call. We, you know, we had about four years ago, we had a massive storm in one of our territories. Sure. We called in surpros from Cincinnati, from Cleveland, from Columbus, from PA to help. Um, and it's amazing. There may be a piece of equipment, you know, maybe we got two commercial jobs in our, uh, and maybe one of our uh, generators is already on a job. We, we have, again, 2000 other franchises to call for that help and stuff like that. So it's huge. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. And now, and now, do you guys do any like major catastrophe response, like hurricanes or things like that, or do you? Kinda... We do it all. We do it all. Okay. We have. We actually have. Uh, I think there's five. There may be six. Just like four guys and, and and two awesome ladies. But when a storm comes, they go. Matter of fact, when they're home, they're depressed. They're depressed because they got to be home. <laughs> they'd rather be on. They'd right. rather be on storm. But uh, we, we've done, you know, we've done million dollar hotels. Um, you name it, we've done it. Uh, we did flooding in Midland, Michigan, which was the whole city of Midland, Michigan was underwater because the dam broke up in Midland, Michigan. So we probably did, I want to say probably 100 to 200 homes that had, wow. you know, flooding and sewer and drain back up because of that. So um we send out crews we send out priority responders but we also these guys because they've been on storm they know how to work with temps because whenever you go on storm you better be able to work with temps sure sure um well and a lot of catastrophe adjusters that on the insurance side are kind of like temps a little bit yeah um, yeah, 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 yeah yeah so but uh so i and i as a catastrophe adjuster i definitely know the you know in the in the off season when i'm not doing storms it's like you're uh -huh. just like biting your nails. You're at the door. <laughs> That's how our yeah, storm exactly, right? They, they, lo they love it. They, I, I don't, but they do. So God bless them. That's why That's why they do yeah. what they do. A couple of things. <laughs> and, and I tell this to anybody. So to adjusters, insurance agents, you name it. They got, please get sewer and drain back up on your policies. <laughs> okay. Do right. not. Trust oh. me. I've been in houses with sewer and drain backup coverage in houses that didn't i can tell you which ones went well and which ones didn't um so of course sewer and drain backup is, is huge and, and really the only other thing how everybody can work together speed is the key you know one of the things we run into is the homeowner being nervous to have us start the service because they haven't talked with their insurance company or they haven't talked with an adjuster. So as soon as we get the green light to do emergency services, I'm not talking about full out demo and stuff like that, but just the emergency services where we can stabilize a home and, and get the drying equipment in there to start the process is huge.
is, is huge. So sure. speed is the key. Get us there as soon as as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I I, I can see. Uh, you know, and I, and honestly, that I think that goes for a lot of different kinds of claims, but, but probably most particular with water because the longer it sits yeah. there, hours that right, even just right. hours adding up. I mean, it can hours it can go days, from being. Yeah, yes. salvageable to then destroyed, and then it costs right. everybody yeah. headaches and exactly. all that stuff. Exactly. Well, guys, I really appreciate you coming on um, and talking to us and sharing some information. And uh, if if people in the you said it was Ohio, Michigan, where are you guys at again? Ohio, we're we're in Northeast Ohio and Western PA, but we go all over. Oh, yeah, we can help we can, anywhere. We can go all okay. over. Well, if people want to know how to get in touch with you guys, how do they do that? Very simple. 330-393-9999. That number takes you to all of our different franchises and it takes you to get you to our storm team too if we need to go out on a, a catastrophe or anything like that. So 330-393-9999. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. Thanks thank you. For Thanks for having us. Well, hopefully that cleared up a few things for you about water mitigation. That does it for me. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. Adjuster TV, it's all in the wrist.